tabs, 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 tabs. Why bass players or any musician for that matter should never ever use tabs. A little bit of a story time for you guys. I feel like the best way to paint this picture, to prove my point, is to talk about myself and my own musical experience growing up becoming a musician. My father was a music teacher and when he first got me playing an instrument, I played bass and trombone and piano and all sorts of these different instruments. I would pretty much go to guitar lessons every week and say, you know, hey guitar teacher, what's going on? Can you teach me this song? He'd listen to it, he or she would listen to it, They'd write me out some tabs or some music notation, I'd go home and I'd practice my butt off and I'd learn it. I did that again and again and again and again. I became really, really good at reading tabs. I became really, really good at reading music, but I had no progress, no improvement, nothing whatsoever in terms of being able to learn a song by ear, being able to just listen to a song and figure it out myself. My entire life, my entire bass career, up until maybe like eight or nine years ago when I when I got into high school and got, when, then I went to university and studied music for four years to get a degree. But up until that time, I just got really good at reading tabs and reading notation and learning where to put my fingers and learning how to read the notes. And I did not improve at all at ear training, at being able to just listen to a song, a melody, a bass line, whatever, and just be able to pick up my bass or pick up the piano or whatever and be able to play it. And if you are in the same situation as me right now and you're watching this video, you're probably thinking like, wow, why is Adam telling me I should never ever use tabs? The reason why is because you become, and I became, so reliant on it that I thought that's what music was. I thought music was just learning songs from a, from a bunch of numbers or from a bunch of notes on a staff. And until a few years ago, until I matured as a musician and I started playing a lot and learning from some of the best musicians here in Toronto and all over Canada and North America, I learned the importance of having a good ear or what we call having big ears in the musician's world. No, it doesn't mean you actually have big ears. It means that you can hear something and just be able to figure it out. Maybe not right away, but, but pretty, pretty quickly. And the way I got into this at first, okay, just to give you guys a few tips today is what my dad had me do is he had me go down to the piano and he just had me play certain notes or he would play certain notes on the piano and I would sing those notes back. And at first I was like almost tone deaf. I couldn't do it at all. And it became clear to me that no wonder I always learned songs from tabs and notation. I didn't have the skill. I didn't have the oral training and the oral skills to actually be able to listen to a song and play it. And this, this made me sad, man. I was really sad because I have friends and I had students who just were naturally good. They had naturally good ears and they could just listen to a song and pick up their instrument and play it right away. And that made me mad. That made me so mad because I was like, why can't I do that? And I, for a while, I think I kind of like, well, I shouldn't say I gave up, but I kind of just realized like, oh, well, I guess that's just the way they are and this is the way I am. And once again, as I matured, I realized or ear training, oral training, and being able to develop an ear so you don't have to use tabs, so you don't have to use notation, that is a skill that you can totally, totally develop. It's not something that you, you can't develop. If you're tone deaf, whatever, if you work hard at it, and I'm a testament to this, if you work hard at it, you can totally build up your ears to be as good, if not better, than some of the people who have perfect pitch or some people who naturally have a really good ear. And how I started doing that, like I was saying, was singing notes on the piano. Singing, even though if you're not a singer, I'm not a singer, is one of the best ways to get a connection between what you're hearing and what you're hearing in your head. I know it sounds kind of weird, but just being able to hear sort of inside your head very, very clearly intervals, um, different sequences of notes, all that sort of stuff is such a good skill. And once you can sing it, there's this quote, if you can't sing it, you can't play it. So once I started getting better at singing, I started singing certain melodies like Christmas carols, nursery rhymes, songs I heard lots and lots of times. And I would just pick up my bass and start on a note or piano, any instrument for that matter. That's the cool part about this is you don't even have to be a bass player or have your bass. You can practice this pretty much anywhere with any instrument. I'd pick up my bass and I'd noodle around and I'd just try to figure out songs by ear. And I would suffer through it. I was horrible at it. But the coolest part, the most satisfying part that I want you guys to take away from this video is it became infectious. The momentum started growing growing so much once I actually started learning songs by ear, I got better at it. I would like be on the TTC, like the public transportation, I'd hear ding, dong, dong, and I'd be like, oh man, that's five, three, one, and I'd know how to play that on the bass. I'd hear songs on TV, 
or in movies or I'd hear my favorite bass lines and I didn't no longer have to get a uh, notation or tabs for it. I finally had started developing the skills to do that and it was so satisfying. It was the biggest game changer of my entire bass playing and of all of my musicianship. Being able to learn songs by ear and be able to hear songs using your ears and not having to worry about any other thing has been the most freeing, the probably the most pivotal lesson I've ever learned. So I hope that sort of covers essentially what I was talking about in the title of this video, why bassists should never ever use tabs, okay? I'm not actually saying like, you know, if you're like teaching someone a quick song or showing a fingering, tabs can be very, very uh, minimal amount of times, can be useful, but for the large majority of people, I really believe bass players should not be using tabs and they shouldn't be learning with tabs. As quickly and as soon as possible, teachers and bass students, if they're self-taught, should be forcing themselves to learn songs by ear and to not rely on any tablature to teach them their songs, okay? I know that, that sounded kind of ranty and I kind of just had to vent out because I get so many comments on my videos like tabs, 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 where are the tabs for this, where are the tabs for that? And it just, it makes me really sad because they're never gonna be the musician that they truly could be, the musician they could truly develop into being like I have developed into being just by taking the easy way out and using tabs and using notation. So if you're scared, if you're nervous, whatever, man, go on YouTube, find some tutorial videos about ear training, oral training, start with very, very simple songs you know extremely well and work your way up from there. Eventually, you're just gonna hear a song in your car driving to work or driving to school or whatever. You'll hear a song and you'll just be able to play it almost before picking up your bass. And that's such an awesome feeling, it's so cool. That is why bassists should never, ever, ever use tabs or even music notation for that matter. As always guys, if you enjoyed this video, hit the thumbs up button, leave me a comment below with your thoughts, and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Adam Stevens Bass, for more videos. Thank you so much for watching, I hope you learned something. See you back here soon. Peace out.